Hi, welcome to this quick start series video. In this video, uh, I wanted to introduce Aruba Fabric Composer. So let me go ahead and just jump right into the uh, video uh, and give an introduction for uh, Fabric Composer. So Aruba Fabric Composer is, is really our new software which helps orchestrate a set of switches as a single entity in a data center fabric topology. Of course, this helps simplify the, you know, the networking operations day to day, uh, as well as troubleshooting uh, functions. So Aruba Fabric Composer, it's designed to work seamlessly with the Aruba CX 8325 and 8360 series switches. And then if this, of course, is to help optimize that entire data center fabric provisioning, as well as uh, application performance across, you know, a wide variety of uh, environments in the data center, including uh, compute and storage environments. So this really is an innovative solution, uh, which is ideal for IT admins who, you know, often struggle with manual and siloed IT uh, service provisioning across their uh, compute and networking environment. IT generalists who may not actually have a deep networking expertise can also now provision and manage this entire data center fabric all from a single console. Additionally, Aruba Fabric Composer provides support for powerful integrations, which help the IT admins to help automate, you know, routine network uh, configuration tasks in response to uh, events that happen in the environment. So, for example, via the integration with uh, vSphere, Aruba Fabric Composer can discover and then visualize that entire virtual networking infrastructure, as well as the physical infrastructure that it's connected to. Uh, let me actually jump into the uh, Aruba Fabric Composer solution. So this is a deployed fabric. Uh, it's a spine and leaf fabric, uh, two racks, two switches uh, acting as a high availability at the top of each rack and two spine switches. We can see here from the dashboard that I'm getting uh, a lot of information about the environment. I've got six switches. I can see the fabric inventory that those switches see. So the Mac at attachments, the LDP neighbors, and the number of ports that are available. I'm also getting some ILO information because I've integrated this solution with ILO Amplifier. And so ILO Amplifier helps provide that information for me about my servers. Clearly I have some uh, maintenance I could probably do on my servers. I've also integrated this uh, solution into a vCenter environment. And so we can see that we've got eight hypervisors that exist within the environment. And we can see 67 VMs. And of course, the number of kernels that exist in the environment. On the right side, you'll actually see a guided setup menu. Now, this is what I actually use to deploy this entire fabric. And I simply just followed down the entire steps to this guided setup and answered all the questions. And the entire fabric was deployed in, uh, in, easy, in less than 30 minutes. I'm going to actually jump into the visualization section here and show you the network's visualization. So this is the spine and leaf fabric that we've deployed. You can see the little icons are indicating spine versus leafs. And of course, if I hover my cursor over any, any device in the screen here, we'll see some information being presented to the admin. So a lot of this information that we're looking at here, of course, is coming directly from the switches. Um, but also, of course, here on the right, I can choose uh, hosts as an example. And I can go ahead and like select a host in the environment. And I can see where that host is directly connecting into this networking environment. And the same thing uh, as we saw with the switches, I can hover my cursor over that host and I'm getting a lot of information about that host. I'm getting information that's actually a combination of information that's being provided by the ILO amplifier integration, as well as the vSphere vCenter integration. Um, in fact, uh, I can actually click on this switch and I could actually launch into the host view to change my view directly uh, into the host view, which I'll show you next. Um, we have some other options in here, though. We could look at uh, neighbor tables. And so it pulls up a listing of the neighbors that are being seen and, of course, the ports used for these neighbors and the switches and the hosts. I could change this to uh, attachments. And for example, 
thought, wait, well, there we are. Okay, so we're going to see all our MAC addresses that are seen in the environment. So I could select those, and of course, it visually uh, displays those MAC addresses for me. Um, let me actually go back to the uh, host one. And uh, as I was saying, I could actually click on this host here and launch directly into that host view. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that right now. Launch host view. And this takes us into the uh, host view screen, which can also be accessed through the visualization tab at the top here. And of course, we can see information, detailed information about the servers in my environment, the NICs that they're attached to, the distributed switches and the V switches that they're attached to, the port groups, all the way down to the VMs in the environment. I can see how this environment actually connects into the physical world using the links here. Um, also, you'll notice that I can actually uh, click on the host here. So again, on this screen, if I hover, I'm going to get information about each device that I hover my cursor over. You can see here on the physical port of the switch, port 111, it's got VLANs 10, 20, and 60 applied to it. Well, I didn't add those, switch, those VLANs to the switch. Uh, Fabric Composer added that automatically because it sees those VLANs attached to the V switch down here. Um, another thing I wanted to show is these hosts, I can actually click on these hosts and I have some direct actions that I could do. I could literally launch directly into the, um, into the ILO uh, portion of this host to maybe do some maintenance on the host. Uh, you'll see here also, if I have maybe a network technician in the host, I can turn on and off the UUID indicator. It's actually on right now, so I'll go ahead and just turn it off. And of course, I even have the ability to modify uh, ho the host power directly from here rather than jumping into ILO first also. As we scroll down, we'll see uh, the other uh, servers in the environment and how they actually connect into the uh, switches in the environment. Um, here's a good example of uh, a SimpliVity environment the 101081 and 82 host are SimpliVity environments using standard V switches. And we can see how they're connected into Leaf 1B, but they're also connected into Leaf 1A. And because of the links here that we see here, these are actually the backup links that are connected into Leaf 1A. The primary links here are into Leaf 1B. Of course, this is a really helpful tool that can help network admins uh, troubleshoot an environment. Oftentimes, we may not have connectivity from a, a, a VM, and simply coming into a visual representation like this that shows the, the representation on the host and the hypervisor environment, but all the way to the physical environment, can help us troubleshoot things. There's been a number of times where you might end up seeing a VM that you think should have connectivity, but when you get into a view like this, it's really easy to see that that VM isn't attached to the right uh, distributed vSwitch or port group. So it's a very handy, very helpful uh, tool for our, uh, our users. Um, let me go through a few more things here. So I'll jump into the uh, switches environment to show the switches. And of course, we can see all of the switches that are in the environment. We can see the software version that they're running. Uh, but we could also take actions on these switches. So for example, if I wanted to, I could upgrade the software on these switches. Uh, I can uh, stage some firmware and then upgrade the software on these switches. I don't have any firmware stage at the moment, but when we do upgrade the software, we have the option of uh, rolling out this software in a um, in a step-by-step -step fashion. So, for example, if I had two VSX pairs like Leaf 1A and B, the solution will deploy the software to each switch individually, and it'll wait, of course, for each switch to boot, boot fully back up so that we can continue having connectivity. Now, I also mentioned that uh, I integrated in with ILO Amplifier. So ILO Amplifier is a uh, aggregator of ILO devices used for HP servers. And of course, ILO is used to help manage each of these HP servers. Uh, now that ILO Amplifier is integrated into the solution, it provides a lot of information that you've seen in the while I hover over a lot of uh, the devices. But of course, I can also launch directly into ILO Amplifier from here. 
Now, ILO Amplifier doesn't support single sign-on, so you do have to log in. But once I'm there, now I'm logged directly into ILO Amplifier, and of course now I can start taking a look at these warnings that uh, that uh, we can see uh, within the Aruba Fabric Composer solution and try to resolve each of these warnings for my server. And now that we're back in Aruba Fabric Composer, you can see under the Configurations tab is where we can go into, uh, you know, the individual configurations of these solutions and take a look at them, maybe modify them if we needed to. Uh, of course, here's the Port Groups section, so we can get a, a clear view of the, uh, of the ports that are up or down, the VLANs that are being used. We can... Uh, Actually, right now, I've only got one switch selected, but let's say I wanted to put that other switch on the other top of rack in there. We can actually list both of those switches. Of course, now, since they're all listed side by side, I could start actually sorting things. Uh, so let me just sort this by port, and you'll notice that it, it organizes everything by port, but you'll see it's leaf 1A and 1B. So maybe it's port 111 that I wanted to make my configurations to, uh, or changes to, or in this example, maybe... Uh, 114 and then of course we could quickly modify those but we could also change our view to the view like this which is also a really handy and easy way of uh, determining which which interfaces that we want to work on so it gives a, customers a lot of flexibility in how they actually want to um, you know use the environment whether they want to leverage the table view format which gives you a really you know, organized way within a table structure that we can sort uh, in, in a variety of different manners, or of course the visual representation. And you'll see this throughout uh, Aruba Fabric Composer, these options are available. Uh, let's go to link aggregation groups, same type of thing here. So I, I have a link aggregation group connected to one of my servers in uh, Rack 2, I believe it is. Yeah, 2A and 2B. Uh, if I expand that, we can actually get information about the individual ports and the LACP modes that those ports are in. And of course, if we wanted to, we could modify things using the Actions menu. Of course, in this screen, we also see the different ISLs that have been configured. These were all automatically configured for me when I deployed the fabric. And of course, we could go to Routing section, where under the VRF section for routing, we're using the default uh, VRF by default. I can go into the IP interfaces section, and this is where I can get information about the uh, physical links within the environment. So you could see the spine links, uh, spine A, spine B links, and the ports that they're using, and of course the IP addresses that are using in the operational state. Um, we can uh, change the uh, view to our underlay section, and this is where I actually deployed the underlay. We can edit the underlay. If I choose edit, you can see the values that I chose when I built out this using the wizard. And of course, we could modify some of these if we needed to. Uh, on the overlay tab is where I created the overlay uh, solution using the wizard. Again, we could edit any values here if we wanted to. Now we're back at the dashboard. So I hope this was a good introduction to Aruba Fabric Composer for you. Um, the next two videos in this series are going to be videos where I'm actually deploying this entire fabric that you see uh, here. Um, so please stay tuned for those two videos that will be posted very soon. Um, they'll be very helpful in actually seeing the entire deployment of a fabric from start to finish. So thank you very much.